Okay, today I'm going to show you how you can set up a DAISY server on your local PC to test my mods. Um, it's very useful if you want to just check out the configs, test uh, some stuff, play around with it, and uh, you don't have to restart your normal server with the players and uh, yeah, mess things up. And you should always test test uh, things first on your on your test server. So this is how you can set up with uh, my mods. So uh, first you have to go to my website and download my mods. So let's go to the download section and then we download, for example, advanced groups, um, save this. Then we also need the server PBO. I've already created uh, a server mod folder in my DayZ server folder with an add-ons folder. I'm going to show you this one in a second. I'm already saving it over there, so I don't have to move it again, but you have to move it maybe into the right folder. So keep that in mind. So we download all the mods now. Uh, let's install these three mods. So um, in my DayZ server folder, I have the server mod folder with the add-ons folder, as I just showed you. So this is where you put the server PBOs you download from my website. And I also have a client mods folder. This also has an add-ons folder. And in here, we need to put the PBOs we just downloaded. So we open the spawn select, add server pack add-ons, and move all the add-ons in here. Um, we don't need any of the other files except for the key. So let's do that too in the DayZ server folder. You should have a keys folder. Move that in here. I already have it, but just replace it. And um, this one is the same for all my mods. So if you install it once, you should be fine. The client mods folder, let's install the rest of the mods. So this one was spawn select. Now the garage mod, you can replace the core PBO. It's the same for all the mods. And advanced groups, also replace the core PBO again. So we've done the first two steps. We've installed the client mods and the server mods. We also have to load them. So we have a start.batch file in here and can edit this with notepad and you can see we have set up our profiles folder as profiles. So this one is important. Also it's important to have your config file set up and the mod and the server mod and make sure the names are correct. So um, let's check out the server config. So just call it a test server. And also here you can change the map, but that's not really anything you need to change in here. Um, okay, so uh, let's see, we already have the, pro uh, we already have the profiles folder. So um, let's see what happens. Um, the server will probably shut down and tell us to whitelist our IP. Uh, so let's see, yeah, the server shut down now. So we can check in the profiles folder we just set up. Um, we see the script log. Sometimes you need to refresh to show the latest script log and then sort by the last modified date and open the script log. And now it's uh, telling us to whitelist our IP. So we copy this and go to my website, go to the customer panel and then we have advanced groups, add the IP, the virtual garage adding and spawn select. So this should be everything you need to do to set up your local DayZ server. Make sure to always have your IP whitelisted. Most uh, of your internet providers will change it every 24 hours. So that's the thing you need to keep in mind. Um, or you set up a test server on your root machine on the internet. So just have two servers running at the same time. That's also working fine. I like to use my local PC. And as you can see, the server is starting now. It's loading mission. Uh, let's quickly check out the batch file for the client. This one starts battle eye with 011 to start the DayZ client with battle eye. Also with the client mods, I've set up a name and connect to our server and also set up a profiles folder. The client mods are already installed for me. I have a sim link here to link to the same folder we have in the DayZ server folder. So that's pretty useful to have, um, but you can also just copy it over. And so let's start the client and we should get in game. Um, that's everything for the video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can add yourself in the admins file. And yeah, let's see you over there.